Hello and welcome to the two-man power trip of wrestling. I am JP at John Paz, and joining me is the man and the founder of the two-man power trip, technically speaking, the first guest ever, the man that put me on the map. He is Mr. Double J, the former WCW world champion, US champion, king of the mountain, Double J, Jeff Jarrett. How you doing? Paz, how we doing, man? It's been a bit. You guys, yeah. uh, you still cranking out episodes and kind of amazing huh how many, yeah. how many years ago did uh i found this bad boy i'm kidding i'm not the, I, I i'm a i'm a co-founder i'm yes, a co-founder yes. of TNA, so i'm a co-founder of the two man how many years has it been now january of 2015 so we've done about 600 plus episodes since but you were the first that, that's bizarre dude that Isn't that really, crazy it is it, it, and, and i was promoting wrestle kingdom nine is that accurate y yes yes yeah 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 wow here we are yeah, we pretty amazing. Almost, yeah, <laughs> it's, it is amazing. So how's Jersey today? That's oh, pretty good. Not, not too bad at all. It's actually kind of nice. Nice weather for uh, November 18th. Eh? It's not oh, bad. You're such a liar. Nothing. Nothing's ever good <laughs> Jersey on a November 3rd. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love that, Jersey. Hey, that's what everyone always says. They're like, ah, oh, Jersey sucks. Armpit of no, America, all this other stuff. Jersey's Jersey. Great. Especially, you know, people think of Jersey as, um, I don't know, you know, just you know you got philly down at the south and oh we got to go over into jersey and then yeah. up north in the city oh god you got to go over to newark and jersey ah but you know what once you get out in the country it's beautiful it oh, absolutely yeah. is beautiful people don't really realize that uh, unless you sort of uh, have been up and down the roads uh like myself so what we're we gonna talk about today Paz? my world yeah what's going on with my world what's going on with you and connie how's it going I know you guys are dominating. I don't know about that, but we're having a lot of fun. I, he literally, I just hung up with him. We're talking about uh, on a, I'll call it another business opportunity. And uh, tell you what, man, we cranked this thing up, uh, announced it uh, this year, the day after WrestleMania. And then a month later, we actually launched it. And so, um, candidly, it's sort of blown me away, all the opportunities and the fun that I'm having. And then, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, and some I'm reconnecting with folks that I hadn't talked with a couple of years. Like, Hey, you remember this or remember that, or, or, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun trip down memory lane. Sometimes, sometimes it gets emotional. Uh, sometimes there's some memories that, that, that are jarred that I go, I wish I wouldn't have remembered that, but no, it's, uh, it, it has uh, all kidding aside, been a lot of fun. Um, and man, the doors that it continues to sort of open, uh, you know, I'll be making, you know, some announcements coming up in the next, I don't know, two or three months. Uh, but, but it's all, you know, uh, sort of generated through relationships. And then they hear me on the podcast and a phone call and connect next thing we're doing a, a little business venture. So a lot of fun. Cool. Would you ever think about promoting shows again? Would you ever think about that? Isn't that crazy? You know what? I've been asked that a lot this week. Um, or actually the last 10 days or so. And Conrad's like, where'd this come from? You know, and, and just by my answer, I think people are like, what, why is that such a, anyway, I'm a third generation promoter. I'm always going to be in the promotion game. Um, but I have stated very clearly that launching a promotion like I did in 2002, uh, with TNA, um, it is, is, it's not even applicable to today, the strategy to today, 2021 going into 2022. There are so many things that have changed. And even through the global force days and, and sometime in the near future, we're going to be potentially doing a global force episode to do a really deep dive and hear all the ins and the outs and, and everything that went into that. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, I'm a, I'm a third generation. So my grandmother promoted, my dad promoted, and a lot of people know them as just wrestling promoters. My dad promoted a little bit of everything from time to time. Um, you know, I'm same thing. Uh, but I do think, uh, it goes without saying if you are even a casual fan of professional wrestling, I think anybody can see the opportunities that are there. Uh, but, but, you know, drilling down on that to the next level, it, it's, it's much more, appetizing when you look at talent and then you look at the the way technology has evolved uh from a production point of view you know th those uh, those are real game changers uh when you're promoting anything talent and 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 production 
and and when those have uh, when those two I'll call them line items in a lot of ways. When those two items has radically changed like they have over the last, I'll call it 48 months, uh, it's it's very interesting to look at. Now, with you and Conrad, I noticed Conrad is a big ball buster. I mean, he is big. Saying oh. you're not a member of the Horsemen, even though Rick said you were. But interestingly enough, and you were, we were joking around before off air about Arn. Arn, I know pretty well. Arn said not a horseman so rick arn what's the balancing act here who, who who's right who's wrong now here's what i love arn and and you know i'm so happy that i i don't want to say this generation but i know you're aware of his password but there's a lot of folks that don't know how good of a performer and i'm not talking about just the spine buster i'm talking about arn anderson the talker um because he was a producer for years and years and years at wwe and you know basically completely off the grid as far as an on-screen character. Now people getting to see him talk and the combination of him and Cody, it's a lot of fun. But with all that being said, I have videotaped from Nitro. It's been shared, Paz. How does Arn debate that he <laughs> said in the heat of the moment, Mongo, get over here, Jeff, get over here, shake hands, looked at me in the eye and said, you're a horseman. So what's his debate, Paz? Oh, he changed his mind. He changed oh, his mind. Oh, you guys want to bust balls, but you want to <laughs> recreate history. That's just, that's not fair to the Four Horsemen's legacy. It's just, <laughs> I'm joking. We've had so much fun with all this, but I'm a Four Horseman and, and uh, Conrad can suck it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if, if Nate said it, I don't know. You almost have to go with Nate, no? That's what I'm saying. It, all due respect to, uh, uh, to, to our friend, Arn. Nate you know, launching his new podcast and off and running. He had the opportunity. He said, yeah, of course he was a horseman. So pause. We put that to bed and I'll, I'll yeah. let you know that, that you are in complete agreement with, with uh, me. Yes. Him. Yes. <laughs> now I talked to Kevin Sullivan all the time. He was saying like the end game was going to be you versus flair. How come we never saw like that end game where it was going to be you guys having a feud. Is it, he got injured, I guess. Well, he had a shoulder deal early, but, I don't want to say politics because it sounds like I'm pointing fingers at other folks. Circumstances, wrestling politics, life, it all sort of happened. But the original concept that Kevin Sullivan uh, that, that laid out and the timing of me coming in and, and NWO at that time had had, you know, seven, eight, they, they were getting to be a big group. So the, 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 I don't call it watered down, but there wasn't that core hall, Nash and Hogan, all that. When, when Kevin laid that out to me that, hey, you know, Rick's going to have to have a little shoulder surgery and we're not sure where that's going, but he can still work. But when he laid out, I'm thinking to myself, how lucky am I? I'm 29 years old and I'm going to be battling, you know, the, the, the NWO angle was, for lack of a better word, WWF invading WCW. But WCW's mainstays, and again, Lex had gone off and worked as the, you know, for WWF and Sting was transforming into that character. So who was the real foundation of WCW? It was Rick and the Horseman. So for me to get that opportunity and I'll say as a heel and Rick is a baby face, a legacy baby face. And I just saw so much potential and opportunity and Kevin Sullivan did too, that, that it, it, it was a story that, 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 you know, Jeff comes in the full horseman and the reason he's in is because Rick says so. So that that aligns us and gives us a bond. And although there was some dissension with Mongo and Arn, and as the story plays out, you know, okay, they finally accepted the fact. And for then for me to get in, and then me to double cross Rick, it, the people it would have been a I, I, I that's a I can't say I regret, but I really think that story would have been. A lot of fun. I think it would have done a tremendous amount for my career in a lot of ways, uh, but it didn't happen. So uh, it is what it is. Now, another hot button topic. Horseman was definitely one on the show. Austin, Steve Austin was another one. You got fired up that episode. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> don't get on Jeff's bad side. He'll get out the guitar and start whipping ass. But I know Derek from uh, Ad Free Shows. I know him a little bit, but it's funny. It's like they definitely, not that on purpose, but they definitely went with like, oh, Austin and Jeff not really friends and like kind of went in that angle without talking about you guys being buddies before that. So it was, it was weird, but it was awesome to see you get fired up about, uh, about you, that. You, like that. You know, it's funny. I've gotten me and Conrad both got texts, 
and some calls like, Hey, 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 that, that was a, that was, that was a, that wasn't real. Was it? Or, you know, they, they, folks tried to dance around it because if it was a work, they were like, Oh yeah, we do as a work. But, but, but me and Conrad, it was like, Hey man, it, it was what it was. Everybody were partners in this podcast. He picks the topics, but I also, you know, it's, it's as Conrad says, Hey Jeff, it really is your world. It is your story. And so, I, you know, look, there's a lot that goes into that whole, I'll call it dust up and not a blow up, a dust up, you know, Derek had less than 24 hours to research it because of miscommunication on all of ours part. So I, I just thought that, that even the night that, that Vince Russo told me Austin's mad that you said something about a paycheck back in Tennessee. And I was like, okay, Vince can't be fabricating this. He would never know this story had Steve not told him, but Steve can't be serious or can he, because it just, it confused me. I first like, this is a rib. Is this a joke? But when I heard he's serious and then, you know, later Bruce had, you know, Bruce was talking about Bruce knew the side of it. And I'm thinking to myself at the very core of it, pause. And I'm glad we're having this kind of at the very core of it. I would have to be a real a-hole to say that just unprovoked. But the truth be known, I said that to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 right. guys. It was a running joke in the locker room that, People would get their checks, and they were some really lean years. Ask Dash Mantel, ask The Undertaker during that time. Uh, there was a lot of folks that came through Memphis during that era that went on to huge careers. The checks were lean, and they sucked. But I got the exact same ones, uh, and it wasn't fun uh, by any stretch. But I certainly – but I wanted – I thought that was the story behind the story. All these years later, they heard about me and Steve, you know, I don't call it the animosity because I never had any toward him. He, he had it toward me, but at the end of the day, business is business. But I, I thought it was very important that my father and Chris Adams from the wrestling school, and then me and Steve worked each other in Texas and Tennessee and just the building of the, the friendship. And then look, business is business. I, I totally get it. I have no animosity. It never did with Steve. It, it, it was business and things like that happened, but it was funny how all that went down. And that episode and the backstory to it that was left out. And Conrad was like, who cares about you wrestling? And I said, I care. <laughs> right. Yeah. You got to mention that, hey, we, we were actually buddies. Like, you know, we, we wrestled each other hundreds of times. Yeah. 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 It's fun, though. With um, Austin, I mean, that awesome shoe promo that you cut to in WBF in 97 probably didn't <laughs> help either. You tell him, oh, you come out, out 30 times a night and start stunning people. I mean, that probably eventually didn't help either because he was a little bit of an ornery guy back then. You know what? Uh, and and that is something that I knew then because I had uh, got the, uh, it is, uh, old Cornette always says it's either the greatest curse or the greatest blessing. And every day that goes by, it's the greatest blessing that I was around this business. My father was a promoter. My grandmother's a promoter. Uh, wasn't always that way. But people that get in that top spot, I think Randy Savage is probably the best example. Um, it, it is a sense of, I don't want to call it anxiety or, or paranoia, but it's a heightened sense of, look, I've worked my ass off to get this spot and I will be damned if anything's going to screw it up. And that's the mindset. That's a winning mindset. So I don't, I can't disagree with that. It was, and I've said this, I don't know how many times on the podcast and I've learned this the hard way over the years, over and over and over communication is the key to every relationship. I don't care if it's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt, and your uncle, or someone in business, or literally someone that you're walking into a retail store. Communicating what you want and making sure, and that's why I over-communicate in all my, or I, I try to, I try to communicate in all my relationships because, you know, Paz, is you, you, you rewind back over the years. Had I gone to Steve, I didn't even know he was upset until he blew a gasket at raw seven years later, six years later, I had no idea that existed. None. Yep. I can't put it on him for him to come say, Hey, yeah. So I took offense <laughs> to what you said. I had no idea had I known, but then once I, I knew if I would have gone then and said, Hey man, I said that, you know, I said that 
I didn't mean any ill will out of that. Anyway, that's uh, that's my soapbox today. Over communicate, pause. No matter yeah, what, definitely. Communicate. Yeah. With WB, do you still have like an open door with them? Are you still communicating with them? Are you still friendly with them at all? Or is it one of those I, things where it's like, hey, yeah, close yes. the door? I mean, I'll, I won't get into personal relationships I, with a, right. a super, super, super high ranking executive. Uh, I just had a text exchange yesterday. So, but yeah, a, a, a completely open relationship. I think it's, look, I would have never been able to do the podcast. I would have never been able to do the two ventures I'm working on right now. Um, that company I uh, just did some media earlier today and they were asking me about that is you, you can see the transformation of the, the look, it's one thing to cut talent. As you go back many years, Pies, you're well aware of after WrestleMania every year in the old days, that's when yep. there was the exodus of talent. That's the nature of the business. But when you look at head counts from employees and the radical change in offices around the world that, that, you know, their their business model is fundamentally um, changing. Uh, the network going to Peacock. Uh, they say network's going to go to different places, to different networks around the world. Their business model, it goes without saying, Paz, um, me and you are sitting here doing a Zoom call and an interview, and the technology is great, and, and, and everything goes with that, but we're working out of our homes. So right. the whole world is working out of their homes. Um, that fundamentally changes office and corporate settings. You don't need the assistant that's there. You don't need the assistant that's there. You don't need the copying machines. You, you know, it, it's the, the game has changed. And so I'm very grateful uh, for my relationship, for the opportunities, for the timing of everything. Um, you know, we, we, we candidly, we parted ways long before, but it was on a, a really up note. <laughs> I, I, I'll say I've got a better relationship with them today than I ever have. And that's pretty cool to me. Uh, so I'm excited about the future. It is funny to think about like back to 01. It's like Vince fired me on TV, but like I could still have a great relationship with him. Although who knows if he was joking or not, like when he's doing that, you know what I mean? Like who knows is personal or joking. That's the wonderful world of our industry. You know, we, we um, how do I say this? Uh, again, I'm doing the media rounds. Uh, there was a period of about eight, 10 weeks that I didn't get to do any of my world media. So I'm kind of playing catch up, but I was, I was talking about my world and they were asking about favorite episodes and, and you already hit on about the four horsemen in that. That is the unique part of our industry is, is that you just don't ever know. You think, you know, like me and Conrad's dust up. What? Okay. That was the work. No, that was, you just don't know. And right. that's what is something that, you know, long before I was a promoter, long before I was an executive producer or a talent, I was a wrestling fan and I still am today. You know, watch Dynamite, NXT, Rampage, Raw, SmackDown, pay per views. Pause, can you believe the impact's coming up on their 20 year anniversary next June? That's Enough. amazing yeah. to me. It's, it's amazing to me. And, you know, my relationship with AAA through the years, and lots of cool stuff going on in our business. So as we wind it down, we head towards the finish here. Just one last good question for you, because former WWE world champion, NWA world champion, you've been a tag champion, obviously, into the WWF with Owen. You've been the IC champ a lot, one of the greatest IC champs of all time, six times. So U.S. champion, what's the legacy of Jeff Jarrett? Like when, when it's all said and done, somebody says, oh, what's the stamp? Of, of Jeff Jarrett, what's the legacy he left behind? Not only wrestling, but promoting too, and like everything. Could even be the, the podcast too. What's the legacy of Jeff Jarrett? Oh boy. Um, Oz, that's a tough one. You know, I let, I'll let you and, and, and other, whether it's a, a journalist, a podcaster, a fan, another talent, another promoter, you know, I think more than anything, the legacy is that never stop learning is something that it, it's at the very top of my mindset. Um, you know, when I look back over my entering career and, you know, just throwing out, just, you know, reinventing from the double J to the don't piss me off to the king of the mountain to double J MMA and I had fun with that, but no, just the, but th that's the entering. But as far as behind the scenes and promoting and trying different things and licensing deals and distribution deals, I, I think at the end of the day, I was taught at a really, really young age just because it worked this way today doesn't mean it'll work that way tomorrow. And I'm talking about promoting little small 
towns of armories and high schools. Just you, just because you sold tickets and promoted tickets, you know, last year this way, don't, don't, it's, it's not guaranteed to work this way. And, and I think that's very applicable in today's environment in that when you look around and, and look at the innovators that are trying things different, um, I, you know, look, Conrad is brilliant. He, it is in a lot of ways, you know, the nostalgia of, of the stories of all the podcasters, but he's delivering it in a new manner. Yes, it's a podcast, but it's still, it's done differently. It's it. You look at the success of Conrad and the team. Look, I'm a small part of that, but when you look at the success, so I think it's very applicable to, to, to really have that vision. And so I'm going a long way around. What's the legacy. I, I, I'm no, I don't really give things like that a lot of thought, but never stop learning. I think there are some, I, for me personally, there is an, a tremendous amount of value to keep that mindset. Never, ever, ever quit learning. To me, you're like a cat. You have nine lives. Like whenever you think Jeff Jarrett's down and out, he's not, Oh, Vince fired him on TV. He's done. Nope. He starts TNA. TNA. Oh, he had a problem with Bischoff. Well, he gets that ends up with WWF. Oh, he had a problem. He's leaving WWF. He ends up back WCW. He's the world champion. You know, it just, to me, like you always seem like you had nine lives and you're like an old school, obviously old school throwback wrestler anyway, but it's like, he could be the main event or you need an upper mid card. Like, like an invaluable guy in the card that you don't see nowadays. It's very hard. Even like, like a sting or Kurt angle. It's like, okay, I could see them in the main event easily anytime, but then they could wrestle the mid car or upper mid card. I mean, they could do so or have a blood feud. Like that's always me to use, like me thinking of you as like, he definitely has nine lives, awesome worker. And he could work anywhere in the card and be believable, whether it's the main event, or if you want him to have a, a feud with Benoit over the U S title, it just that's to me, like Jeff Jarrett, one of the all time best in my, in my view. I love, Love your work. You've always been the, the best. And obviously, you're always great to the, this show. Appreciate it, Paz. I appreciate it. You know, that's what the butt bringing. Um, my grandmother and my my father, if you don't, if you can't wear a lot of hats and be, have multiple skill sets, and I'm not just talking about heel or baby face or made of in or jerking the curtain. I'm talking about around production, everything. That was, again, ingrained in me to keep yourself valuable. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, uh, I appreciate those comments, but yeah, I've, I've always had that mindset. Give us the plugs, uh, everything your uh, social oh, media, man. of course, my world, Jeff Jarrett.com or at real Jeff Jarrett, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then all my, uh, all the, my world socials or at my world pod, uh, man, the team at ad free is it's, uh, I can just, and I, you know, the ad free family is amazing to me. And I try to describe that. I was out at a convention out in Gaylord here not long ago. And they were asking me like, what is this Patreon site? I said, yes, it's Patreon and, and everything, but don't let that either give a positive or a negative connotation. Think about it this way. It's the greatest fan club in the world because yep. it has so much value uh, look, I don't want to get into that free plug, but, but, um, a lot of moving parts. And so I appreciate you letting me, uh, have some time here today, talk my world, but, uh, yeah, every Tuesday, 6 a.m. Eastern new episode drops, go to real and it'll give you all the information. Jeff, thank you so much for all the time. Really appreciate it. Thanks boss. Have a great day, my man.